As a child, he was fascinated with the hows and whys of everyday things. Growing up in the 1950s in the city of Dissouk on the Nile River in Egypt, Ahmed's family encouraged that curiosity. One day, one of them did something that Zawail recalled right after winning the 1999 Nobel Prize for Chemistry. While he was still in elementary school, Ahmed's family put a special sign on the door where he studied. Uh, intellectual curiosity, intellectual achievement was, uh, was quite important. So to be a doctor, uh, it is a big achievement. And so uh, for some strange reason on my door, uh, even when I was in uh, uh, you know, elementary school, it said Dr. Ahmed. Almost half a century later, Zawail did that Nobel Prize research. He pioneered femtochemistry. It's the study of ultra-fast chemical processes using special lasers. A femtosecond is one quadrillionth of a second. That's one millionth of one billionth of a second. His pioneering technique uses the world's fastest camera. It captures and freezes the motion of molecules and atoms as they undergo the reactions that produce gasoline, plastics, medicines, and generally make life possible. It's almost like a slow motion replay for chemical reactions. Zoel traces his quest to see how molecules and atoms behave to his very first experiment. 12-year-old Dr. Ahmed was fascinated at how matter could change from one form into another. Liquids evaporate into invisible gases. Gases condense into liquids. Solids heated in air disappear into flames. Young Ahmed read that solid wood heated without air changes into a flammable gas, so he decided to see it for himself. I got a uh, test tube filled it with some uh, uh, wood uh, pieces and, uh, and then I had a, uh, made a, uh, a, a right angle arm of a glass and uh, my mother used to make uh, the coffee on a, on a small uh, uh, flame. So I got this flame under the wood, burned the wood and then I saw the gas coming and I was so excited to light this gas and see light coming out. I was excited, but my mother was so concerned about this and she wasn't too happy, but uh, yeah, that was the first experiment I've ever done in my life, actually. That curiosity intensified as Zoel finished school in Egypt, came to the United States to study for his PhD, and continued down the path to that Nobel Prize. Throughout it all, he recalls one trait above almost everything else, critical for success in any career. I never met somebody who has achieved, either in the arts, in the sciences, in, in, uh, in business, in anything, that you don't have the passion for what you do. I just cannot see that somebody will succeed uh, in a significant way without this passion. At the entrance of a car factory, there are piles of steering wheels, tires, windshields, fenders, and other parts. At the exit, shiny new cars ready to drive away. How did those parts get put together to make a car? Imagine not being able to see the assembly line, or change it, or even control it. If that was the case, we would never be able to produce better cars. Before Ahmed Zawail, chemists were in that same situation. Chemists are scientists who make life-saving new medicines, develop new sources of energy, and invent materials to build smarter phones and more powerful laptops. Those products originate when chemical bonds form and glue one atom to another, and when bonds stretch and snap and break to reform in different ways. Chemists could see the starting materials for those reactions. They could see the finished products, but they could not see the assembly process. Seeing those events and understanding them gives scientists the ability to control chemical reactions, control them in ways that produce better products. These events were invisible because the elementary steps of chemical reactions happen very quickly, in femtoseconds. A femtosecond is fast. It's a millionth of a billionth of a second. Imagine a particle traveling at the speed of light, 700 million miles an hour. If that particle traveled for one femtosecond, it would not even get halfway across the width of a human hair. For centuries, everyone thought that seeing a chemical reaction at the molecular level was an impossible dream. But Ahmed Zawail, 
a scientist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, didn't let that stop him. He won the 1999 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for proving them wrong. And Zawail just won the 2011 American Chemical Society Priestley Medal, the ACS's highest honor for his achievements in imaging chemical and biological events in both time and space. We have never seen chemical reactions before transforming from the initial reactants to the final product. As a matter of fact, as a student, we were taught that the area in between, which is called transition state, is a black box. We used to put a question mark uh, on nobody, nobody, because it's fleeting. It's a very fleeting moment in the life of these molecules. So from a fundamental point of view, this was very important. Can you uncover this black box? Can you see what's inside in terms of understanding why reactions go to B and doesn't go to C? Zawail developed a technology known as ultra-fast motion imaging, using what is basically the world's fastest camera to see atoms doing their thing. Well, actually, first, we have to freeze them in time. So we take actually, just like you're doing with the camera right now, we take a frame by frame, and then we do a slow motion picture by having these frames all together at speed more than 30 frames per second, so we can fool your eye, and as such, you can see a continuous uh, movie. For example, if you think about pharmaceuticals, if you think about all enzyme reactions, if you think about so many of the chemical reactions that actually are the basis of our life, we don't really understand fully why they yield the product that they yield. And so this is it's the heart of chemistry and biology. Materials also, I mean, you can, even we have shown and we and the others that you can influence the outcome. But all of this, the beauty of it in our attempt to understand the fundamentals and then you go to apply it in order to direct the course of chemical or biological change. Listen to those words, in order to direct the course of chemical or biological change. That's why Zawail's scientific research, the research behind the Nobel, the Priestley, and as many other prizes, is so important. It's all about control, the control of chemical reactions. Yeah, I, th I think the key here is that you cannot control a process unless you understand it. That's the key. And so the whole field is based on the idea if we understand the behavior of atoms in the course of reaction, we will be able to control them. Since receiving the Nobel Prize, Dr. Zawail has developed a revolutionary method of imaging matter. It enables scientists to visualize objects not just in three dimensions, but in four dimensions. In doing so, it unveils motions that occur at the size scale of atoms and over time intervals as short as a femtosecond. Dr. Zawail named the new technique four-dimensional, or 4D, electron microscopy. It promises to have sweeping applications in medicine, electronics, and biological research. Zawail and other scientists predict that the research that won the Nobel Prize and the ACS Priestley Medal is leading to an era of laser-selective chemistry. It's an era in which chemists become like maestros, waving a baton to conduct a symphony orchestra. But chemists will use laser beams to orchestrate chemical reactions manipulating chemical bonds. Under their direction, those reactions will produce the new medicines, new fuels, and new materials that will give people longer, healthier, and happier lives in a sustainable society. Welcome to today's explorations of the future of science and its impact on society. Celebrating the quintessential scholar and citizen, Ahmed Zawail. Ahmed has had influence and impact both in science and also in a societal way. His remarkable scope ranges from exploring the minutest interactions of particles to engaging the complexity of global politics and culture. Ahmed is someone who never has average goals. If he's going to try something, he's thought critically about the importance of the problem. He has been able to, to watch reactions as they occur on the time scale of a millionth of a billionth of a second. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry came in 1999 for his development of the field of femtochemistry, and everything changed. What do you do 
after you get the Nobel Prize. It's my choice, but hopefully it's a choice that will make an impact. At Caltech, you dream, and you dream big, and the sky is the limit. He gave me a title, The Future of Medicine. Are there ways to increase human longevity? The future of medicine will include us trying to fight off the ravages of age. The battle for basic science will never be won, but clearly it must be fought in every generation. What we thought was that the basis of wealth and the ability to build wealth over time was natural resources. Turns out the basis of wealth is people. Now, I'm sure that when you were young and were learning to do things in the kitchen, that your parents told you that you should never, ever, ever put a closed container of liquid into the oven. Oh, oh fantastic. What are the grand challenges in quantum information science? It's to build complicated quantum systems from the ground up. By doing that, we will realize in the laboratory physical systems that just have not existed in nature before. When you think about it, it's absolutely amazing. How did it start from those particles? And here we have this beautiful world which is around us. And the most important part is after all that evolution, we got the Ahmed Zawail. On behalf of Caltech, uh, we have gotten a gift, which I think is unusual. It's the only book published by Benjamin Franklin during his lifetime. It's a measure of Franklin's, the respect he had for his science and his effect on society. I'm so touched, I don't know what to say. For president, the provost, my friends, my colleagues, uh, and you all, I have been very fortunate to spend 40 years at this great institution. Thank you very much. To me, uh, light is life. It's as simple as that. I'm Ahmed uh, Zuel. I'm here at professor at Caltech in chemistry and uh, physics. Uh, light has been uh, essential to our uh, research. Uh, we work with lasers and uh, ultra-fast lasers, uh, and this uh, enabled us to see for the first time uh, the movement of individual atoms and, and molecules in, in real time. Uh, as we shall see from um, the coming year celebrating uh, the impact of light in our life, it is everywhere. On the human scale, uh, light is the one that makes us see uh, and understand and comprehend uh, the beauty of nature. I wouldn't say it's even applications of light. I would say light is in the fabric of our life and so it is uh, it is really important and I think this was a, a very good decision by the UN and UNESCO to celebrate next year the Year of Light. <laughs>